Okay, so we want to set up your profile and preferences in DocuSign. So I'm going to go log in at realestate.docusign.com. If you already have it open because you've gotten there from command, then that is perfectly fine. <clears throat> if you are ever logging into DocuSign outside of command, this is specifically the link you want to go to. You don't want to go to just DocuSign.com. Um, that's very important to know because we do have specific um, types of accounts with DocuSign through Keller Williams. We have rooms accounts, and so we need to go to this specific link. But of course, always start your rooms from within command, which um, you will learn more about in the DocuSign base basics video. But for now, what we're going to do is set up your profile and preferences. So you'll click your picture in the top right or your initials. So you'll click your initials in the top right. This You'll be able to put your picture here, but in the beginning, it'll just have your initials. And you're going to do manage profile. <clears throat> So here's where you'll be able to upload your photo. It's okay if you don't have um, a headshot yet, then just make a note of the places that you need to go back and add it to once you do have that picture. So under personal, what you're gonna do is go through each of these and fill them out. Um, I actually just noticed I need to update the address on this one, so I'll go do that. So <clears throat> name and email address is probably already here. You're gonna go to just company and title, fill this out. Do the company name as KW Cleveland Keller Williams um, and title as realtor and then save. And then you'll go to address and phone. So I'm gonna change my address here. So this is the office address, of course. Phone number still the same. So if you didn't know what the address or office phone number was, you can make a note of those here and then save. <clears throat> so there are some other things you can do through here. The most important is really that you fill this information out and that you then go to language and region and update the time zone. Um, so it, it will be defaulting to, I think, Pacific right here. So you're going to click on that and just come down here to select the default time zone for all areas of your account and change that to Eastern time. So you have to scroll and find that and then save. <clears throat> um, you can go into signatures and create your default signature and things like that. Um, but the main thing I wanna make sure you do is set up the time zone and put your information in. So then we're gonna go back to the original window we had open because this opened the profile one in a separate tab. So I'm gonna close that tab after I've saved everything. And now you're gonna click your initials one more time and this time go to preferences. So this one's a little bit longer. <clears throat> so we're gonna be just going through these on the left. What you're gonna do is come and change a uh, company name and we'll just put KW Cleveland Keller Williams here. Um, you don't have to put the company website there. <clears throat> Your time zone, this is probably defaulting to central. So go ahead and update that to Eastern as well. And then make sure you save as you go down. You can upload the logo here. <clears throat> and then make sure you save once you've done that. And then of course, feel free to pause the video as you're working through this and then just press play when you're ready to go on to the next step. So then I'm gonna go back up to the top left and go to contact information. You're gonna to wanna to fill all of this out. Uh, of course, put your number in here. I need to update the address on this side as well. So this was a great example. <laughs> and then save. Then you'll go to notifications. Now here, what you can do is you can customize the notifications you receive from DocuSign. So you may wanna wait on doing this and just know where it is um, because you may see some notifications that you get and you're like, eh, I don't really need those. Um, that's just kind of clogging up my email or um, you may see that there's a notification that you don't have turned on. But what I will say is 
a majority of the time people like to disable this daily digest email because it's just an email that you're going to get literally every single day, letting you know what's happening in your DocuSign rooms. And most of the time you're already getting notifications when you're sending things for signature and they come back signed, like all the important things, those are notifying you anyway. So then you're just getting like a, another email that's telling you all of that every day. So um, most of the time people like to turn that off. Then you can come through here and you can turn on um, or turn off any different notifications. What I will say is um, we don't really use um, the um, submitting for review part of DocuSign. Um, you do that just to like get your close out your room for yourself in here, but you submit your files in command. So these notifications really aren't helpful right here for a, tra a transaction room has been submitted for approval, task list, um, comments and messages. Typically, like generally speaking, you don't need these notifications on. Um, these ones that are at the top, these first like five, those are probably the ones that'll be the most helpful. And again, you can always come in and disable something if it gets annoying <laughs> and then make sure to save changes. Then on the left, inbox details. So here I actually do have a separate video that shows you how to use this feature. But what I'll say about it now is that um, you have an email account that is associated with your DocuSign account that you can forward documents to and it will automatically put them in this inbox here at the top left. Or you, there's even a way to put what's called the room ID number in the subject line and have it goes straight into a room. So like I said, I'll go into that in detail in another video. But for now, what I would recommend doing is changing this front half of the email to just be like whatever your KW email is or like first and last name generally is going to work best. Um, because the way the default one that's in there is just not easy to remember. Um, and so I just have mine as Jennifer Pauls. And so it's going to be Jennifer Pauls at mail.docusign.net. So if I forward a document to that from my email that say another agent has sent me PDF, it will go directly into my inbox. So it's just essentially, instead of downloading it to your computer and then uploading it into DocuSign, this is just another way that you can do that. Um, so check out those videos to learn a little more about it. And then make sure to save your changes. And then the last thing is integrations. This is really important because this is where you're going to want to come in and um, add your forms access. So what you're going to do is you're going to click add provider. You won't have anything here right now, and that's normal. You're going to click on realtor logo right here. Enter your nerds ID number. So you'll want to have that handy. And if you don't, you can click find your nerds ID and that will let you find it on the NAR website. Um, but make sure that that's something that you have um, just, you know, easy access to because that nerds number is really important for your business and you'll need it for a lot of different things when you're setting stuff up. Um, and here, what it does is it's actually validating your forms access based on your membership with the National Association of Realtors. So it's important. So you'll put your nerds ID here, your last name, and then find um, Tennessee Association in here. It's not an alphabetical order. So just type T-E-N um, quickly on your keyboard and it will take you to it and you can select it. Um, of course, I don't have an ERDS ID because I'm not licensed, so I can't put that in. But what you would do once you have all that filled out is click validate. And then it will look something like this after you've validated it and you'll have forms access. So this is important to do before you start doing, um, you know, trying to do any contracts or pull in any forms because you'll need to validate that forms access. So once you have done that, you have completed setting up your profile and preferences and you're ready to start learning how to use DocuSign.